Okay, at this point, I've adjusted the lighting and the position of both the environment and of my creature in various ways, lots and lots of ways. Cast shadows underneath, gradients on top, even some color, right? Posing in different ways. And at this point, I might decide there's certain elements I don't even want, like I that aren't helping my composition, like this jelly bean sun. Maybe I don't want it there. Maybe I want it somewhere else. Whoops. Let me make sure I get to that layer. So now we're thinking of the whole of the composition and we have control of every layer, every aspect. But everything is still pretty darn sharp. And so what we're missing, especially in some gaps where I didn't have the most refined cutouts. What we're missing is atmosphere. Now, one way to create atmosphere is pretty simple. I'll use it to, it's tools we've learned uh, to fix this little gap in the sky that I have. You see there? I can use my clone stamp. I can select from something that's soft and misty with a 0% hardness brush. I can use my tablet pressure sensitive with a large brush. I can start at 100%, target it here, paint it in, and then I can blend it in with lower opacities. But clone stamp's a little dangerous because sometimes you get pixels you don't want, like the sides of that mountain. And let's say for the cotton candy, if I go on top of that, I can soften that edge with clone stamp. Oh, I want auto select because that cotton candy is way too hard edged. So if I use clone stamp inside of it and then I kind of create this atmosphere on top of it, softening that edge, all of that works. But there's a way kind of like a non-destructive overlay layer that you can do it over your whole image all at once. And this is what's called the texture overlay. And burn a little bit of that cotton candy because it's getting pretty bright. So, on the very top of everything, at the end of the last video, I took my, my full overlay and I moved it down through the layers. I think I want to move it back on top because I, I liked it. I don't think I want that licorice to be as bright in the, in the front. All right. Okay, so that's now on top of everything. Now, on top of that, I can composite in something new. And so if I go to a Google image search, you can do this in Pixabay as well, but Google's actually gives you more variety. And you're going to do texture overlay. These are things that designers create, right? They used to create and offer them for free, and then like capitalism got involved and started selling them. But the beauty thing about texture overlays is you don't need it to be high resolution for what we're doing which isn't to create like weird paper or old photograph textures. We want mist. We want something cloudy. And you don't even need it to be called a texture overlay. This one's called overlay texture on DeviantArt, right? And unfortunately, even though it's a huge file, if I actually go to the website, maybe I can download the full thing. It just looks like that. It's just gradients. There we go. So a texture overlay can be anything. It's usually in grayscale or it can be made in grayscale. I'm going to save it to my desktop. So that's a hard-edged one because that's perfectly fine to use. Let's look up this one. Misty Cloud Overlay. Then go to images, right, tools, large, ones from DeviantArt are generally offered up for, for use, same with Vecteasy, all of these different, like Pixabay, resources, Colorbox, 
Just make sure it doesn't have watermarks on it, right? So DeviantArt, you actually have to go to the site and then open the image in the new tab to get the full size. Now, so this is a small res photograph. Okay, so both of these are going to work. Let me show you how. First, let me bring in the photograph on top of everything as a smart art object. Obviously, it's small, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to stretch it nice and big over the top of everything. This actually has a little bit of color to it. It's like slightly blue and warm, which can be nice. I'm going to rasterize it. And then I'm going to play with the opacity and take the opacity down. Immediately, I have stormy atmosphere. Okay. I'm going to go to levels. Because notice, we didn't do levels on the whole landscape. We didn't do levels on our creature. It can be helpful to do it on our texture overlay. I can increase the contrast or brighten it or lighten it. Then I'm going to go to color balance. And I can shift those grays warm or cool. In the midtones, I'm going to warm them up a little bit. In the highlights, I'm going to warm them up. Maybe a little towards green. In the shadows, I'm going to cool them down. So this is basically coloring the air, right? I'm at 58% opacity. That's 100% opacity. If I go down to about 30%, I start to see how this can help my image. Then I can go to Image Adjustments Hue Saturation. And I can say, oh, do I want it more colorful? Do I want that hue to change side to side? So this is like glazing a painting. Now you see how there are bands of color and lighting affecting everything the same way, both the creature and the landscape, like atmospheric effects really do. Do I want to lighten it or darken it overall? And you can kind of swing for the fences here because this is all just on a layer on the top. So at normal mode, at 33%, it looks like this. At 100%, it looks like that, right? But I'm going to take it down to like between 20 and 30. And then you can play with blending modes as well. Like maybe you don't like it on normal, but you like it on, on hard light. You like what that does. Or you like it on pin light. You like what that does. It depends on your... on your composition. Now I like it, especially in the background here. You see how it starts to soften these edges. Without it, it looks like that. But this is what I really like. I'm going to take in the other one. Or this could just be a picture of a cloud, right? I'm going to place it. I'm going to gouge and blur it. First I need to rasterize it so that it's soft and cloudy. Blur, Gaussian blur, take off that hard edge. So it's like this. Weird cloudy effects. I'm going to Command T and stretch it. I can even hold down Shift and distort it. Maybe this is like a galactic cosmic effect. Okay. Now this is just grayscale. I'm going to set it to overlay mode. And that's why these are called texture overlays. And notice how immediately that changes things. And if I want mist and variation somewhere, I can actually take a chunk of it. I'm going to do a really big feather, like a 34 pixel feather on my lasso. And I'm going to grab a big chunk of my texture overlay, duplicate it. So this is what it looks like in normal mode. Then I'm really going to brighten that. I'm going to use levels, brighten up the midtones. And now I'm going to set that maybe on soft light, not overlay, to give me a little bit more brightness. See this? Now I have a cloud that I can put anywhere. If I want it stronger, I can duplicate it. 
on soft light on itself. Then I can merge all those duplicates together, Command E, and then set it to soft light again. And I'm going to push this into the foreground a little bit, like a foreground mist. Maybe grow it and now bite away from the edges with a large 0% hardness eraser. I'm going to reveal the foreground and reveal my creature kind of breaking free of this a little bit in some places, not in all places. And it just gives you a lot of overall control of the, the focal points and the focus of your composition. And again, if I want more of it, what can I do? I can duplicate it. I can move it. I can stretch it. I can transform it. I can have a cloud. I can create breath for my creature. You know, he's puffing, puffing out a big exhale. I can kind of erase away from it gently. All of this will help kind of seam your elements together. These kind of texture overlays. This magical wonderland. And then if I need little, little adjustments, I can always use clone stamp on a layer on top. Just to remind you, like we learned with our creature composite, I'm going to make it red. I'm going to call it clone stamp because it's a different kind of layer. I'm going to set the clone stamp to affect all layers. I'm going to use it, in this case, a lower opacity around 40%, large, very soft, and anywhere I need to adjust. I can just kind of paint things in. If there's hard edges, I could use 100%. And this is basically kind of fixing it up. I can also erase away at low opacities from my clone stamp layer. See, I'm not hurting anything with it. It's also non-destructive if I do it on top. If I want a little bit of this red... to be reflected in other places. You can do it in a very low opacity clone stamp. Like why would the red stop just short of the underside of my creature, right? What if I want some of the red reflected in the waffles or in the arm of my creature? Clone stamp. little hits of it. Get a little bit more waffle texture onto that cream. But you can make mistakes, right? That's why it's on its own layer. And you can erase it away. You can even swing for the fences with clone stamp. All of a sudden, this is like bravura um, compositing. I can go at 100%. And I can say, I want another licorice right here. Just put it in behind. And then I can kind of erase away from it, set it into the atmosphere. So the sky's the limit. You have control of every pixel. And that finishes us off. Now, I'll show you one other trick that's often used in concept art. We want it to focus on our creature, right? So if I create a new layer and I do another overlay, so I'm going to say edit fill, 50% gray. I know we're creating a lot of layers. Set it to overlay. We're going to do what's called vignetting the image. So I'm going to burn around the edges of it on this non-destructive overlay layer. I'm going to use the burn tool, not the smudge tool. Mid-tones, less than 20%, large and soft, very large. And I'm just going to hit the edges. 